Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for All About Android is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Hello and welcome to All About Android. Woo! Episode 93, recorded on Tuesday, January 22nd, 2013, the day after the presidential inauguration. If you're wondering what that flag was, uh, we are your weekly source for the latest news, hardware, and apps for the Android faithful. I'm Jason Howell. I'm Ron Richards. And I'm Gina Trapani. Hello, and we are back, and we are happy to welcome uh, back to the studio Tony Hannity's LazyTechGuys.com. Hello. Hey. How are you guys? Hey. Welcome back. Thank you for uh, letting me come back, Gina. Nice to finally meet you. Yeah, big, great big, to be on the show. Big fan from uh, This Week in Google. I listen to you. Awesome. Weekly, so. Nice. Cool. Well, we are uh, stoked to have you in the studio yeah. to kind of kick around some of this stuff. We have kind of a cool, cool episode today. The way it turned out, there wasn't really a whole lot of like, like general Android news. Yeah. Um, so we went ahead and beefed it up with a little bit more on the app side, which uh, seems to be something that people often are asking for. Yeah. They want more apps Always in the show. Yeah. So more of a deep dive. Into yeah, 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 exactly. So. We've got a pretty cool segment coming up uh, before the arena, uh, but we're also going to be discussing new hardware. Sony, LG have a couple of pretty interesting things. Um, well, I guess our segment, I have it in the tease here, our picks for must install apps. If you have a new phone or if we were to get a new phone, what would we install up at the very first uh, car audio options and so much more. And and we should probably, like we mentioned, there was some worry on the Twitter about it, whether I was leaving oh, or yes. not. Oh, yes. So, okay. So, me, yes. I, we'll, so talk about, happen? we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. We'll talk about it more at the end of the show when we plug and stuff like that. But I, I took a new day job. And as part of that day job, that involved me leaving the website, I fanboy the comic book website I work for, to go take this job because it's in the comic book industry. But nothing is happening at Twit. I am yeah. still doing all that Android. Every you cannot pry the show from my cold, dead hands. And so, yeah, so don't worry. We'll talk more about it at the end of the show. But, yeah. For those of you who are, I know I got a ton over the weekend. Yes. Uh, congratulations, but also like, why are you leaving AAA? And for, you know, first Eileen, now Ron. Like, no, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> I, I think people are just, you know, they're they're a little, uh, well, they're a little gun shy. Yeah, like, no, I understand. Yeah. They're like, wait a minute, you're le you're you're leaving. Please don't tell us you're yeah, leaving. You just see the word leaving, and they yes, just assume exactly. it's everything. But yeah, I have a I live a very multifaceted life, so don't worry, it's all good. <laughs> well, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you for us, yeah, and congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you all more about it later on. So. All right. Well, first up, let's dive into the hardware. And in hardware news, Sony uh, made a little announcement of themselves coming off the heels of CES. We heard all about all those, ran uh, not random, but different tablets from the like likes of Asus and Arcus, Arcos and all the other uh, manufacturers. Well, Sony uh, checked in with the Sony Xperia Tablet Z, uh, announcing a 1.5 gigahertz quad-core 10.1-inch uh, tablet that's got a resolution of uh, 1920 by 1200, and it's only 6.9 millimeters thick. Um, in addition to all that, it's got an 8.1 megapixel rear camera. It's going to have N NFC, LTE, uh, micro SD expansion card, and uh, Sony's very own little S Force virtual surround sound technology. Um, mm. And not only all that, you think that the thinness and the uh, surround sound technology and LTE, but it's also waterproof and dustproof, which is, uh, I'm fascinated. The waterproof we've talked about, dustproof is a new one. That, you know, <laughs> but it um, uh, looks like Sony's pretty serious about this tablet. Uh, you know, we've we've talked a lot about the the uh, Tablet S, which uh, I played with for a little while, the, which I wasn't a huge fan of. Um, but this one seems like Sony inching closer to getting it right, at least when it comes to thickness. Look at that. That, that, is, that is tiny. So, yeah. Um, kind of like a yeah. companion tablet to their, uh, what was it, the Xperia? Or the Z. The, yeah, yeah, the Z phone. Yeah. 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 Uh, so that's their line, and and on the Z phone as well, waterproof yep. and dustproof. Yep. Um, I don't yeah, know. What, what, in can submerge it. I want it. I want it submerged yeah. in water and dust. Let's see what happens. <laughs> submerged water in a dust. pile of dust. Well, I'm I telling you, an hour in water, hour in dust. There's there's going to be a whole segment of podcasts that could be dedicated to uh, lab testing these waterproof and dustproof uh, devices. Just mm -hmm. stick them in a. It's going to be like will it blend of, from a few years ago? Like, yeah, will, absolutely. Well, you know how deep can you, you take it to the pool, or the gym, and see you get it in the six feet of water and see if it keeps on working. Well, you know Molly Wood. 
at yeah. CNET yes, does her yeah. show Always yeah. On, and yeah. uh, a big part of Always On is doing exactly that, stress yeah, testing exactly. these devices. I'd be very surprised if they didn't get this, based on how they're touting it to be waterproof and dustproof. Yeah. Now, um, dustproof, so, so kind of going back to that, you think that's pretty useful? You think... I mean, it sounds well, like there's probably a market for it. But looking it. at the video, it doesn't look like it's smudge proof. That's what I want. I don't care about <laughs> dust proof. I want smudge proof, right? I mean, like, it, so it, close. at one point they flip it over in the in the video, and this is the video from The Verge, uh, their hands on video. On the, the back of it, there's just all fingerprints and stuff like that. Like, so is dust really that big of a problem that it's got to be dust proof? Uh, you know, and, and why no. can't why can't we get the smudges fixed? That's my question. But yeah. yeah see, all, I, see, see, all, see the fingerprints oh, yeah, there? Yeah, yeah. 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 It's, so, although so, dust is an issue, I definitely have gotten dust under my. I think it was the Nexus One that I got dust under the screen like twice and had to send it back, and, and they sent me a new one under uh, the you, screen. You that, those, mm -hmm. I've seen that. Yeah. Couple little fibers that. just right under the glass, and you're just like ah. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. But you know, it doesn't seem like so. So when they say dust proof, they mean that dust doesn't cling to the front to to the outside, or it doesn't get underneath. It must mean it must mean it doesn't get underneath. Yeah, that's that's what my, what I'm thinking is. It probably means that it's more protected from uh, being destroyed by dust getting inside the unit. Yeah. Um, I haven't right. seen the ports to know whether, you know, the ports are closed off because sometimes you those see that in, in devices uh, like yeah. this. And I hate those caps, but yeah. I understand why they're there yeah. uh, to protect against that kind of thing. Um, good uh, if you, you know, with, with tablets just kind of making more of a crossover from enthusiast into the mainstream, good if you're working in a place like a construction site right. and yep. you know, or, or something along those lines where Talk your job dust. is surrounded by dust yeah. or surrounded by the, the potential of being splashed by water. So I suppose in that case, it's probably a good deal. This uh, particular tablet also has NFC. Yep. So having it on the phone, very, very useful. But in a tablet, have you ever felt the need like, oh, I have like my Zoom, wow, uh, but whatever it is, yeah. I need to NFC this do you think that's going to be a viable um, feature to have, or is it just a nice to have at this point still? I, I think at this point it's a nice to have, and they can yeah. just throw it in so they can add another acronym to the specs. <laughs> yeah, but like, exactly. The, pro the problem is that we, we haven't... have 10 spaces. What do we add? Yeah. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. What are the things people are looking for at this point? I right, but we haven't... Re I mean, aside from aside from the Google Wallet in, 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 or the... Actually, I'll, I'll give NFC credit. Uh, in San Francisco, the parking meters now... There's a pay by phone app where you can download the app and enter in the number of the parking meter and pay by phone. Uh -huh. Or you can just, if you have NFC, just tap your phone oh, to the oh, meter and it launches nice. the app with the number. So nice. those are the only two applications I've run into. I've yet to find anybody where I need to beam information over to. Like, I haven't done that at all. I've done pictures. Yeah. So, so I mean, it's the applications, really. Yeah. Okay, you know? so you've done yeah. pictures. Yes. In, uh, in an everyday situation, and did it work the way you expected it to, or was it more of a pain in the butt than anything? No, it was very simple. Okay, good. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, I don't know. NFC, is it's just like like we're like you were saying, one of those things that's nice, I guess, on a list that people at this point kind of expect to be in their device, mm -hmm. but I, I rarely ever use NFC. Maybe yeah. I'd use it if I had programmed my own NFC tag at work and programmed it at home on the nightstand. I could see using it like but that, to but what? to pass da to data what? back and forth. To, to do what Tasker already does without me having to do <laughs> exactly, it. Exactly, right? right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the thing that people in the commercials do. They touch their phones together and, and magic happens. It's a, right? listen, yeah, it's a romantic uh, I got I've got no ladies giving me a video to take on the plane. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> watch I, you know, let's, <laughs> when oh. that happens, then NFC will have arrived. Send, send the quarterly reports to the other people. <laughs> right. I was promised sultry videos. <laughs> It's true, <laughs> Samsung. You need to deliver on that promise. Uh, no. Samsung and Santa Claus. <laughs> all, all they can do is is give you the tools. Yes, give I give know, the sultry yeah. lady the tools to I, pass that video. I need to talk to, to my lady friend. She's on iOS, unfortunately. So I'm just. <laughs> oh, yeah, completely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not going to be much use there. Yeah. Um, well, Samsung also, um, a little bit of information has kind of been leaking out. Actually, Tony, you covered this on yep. Lazy Tech Guys. Uh, what you got? So basically, uh, it's been confirmed by Sony's uh, mobile uh, president, uh, J.K. Shin, that they are working on a Galaxy Note 10 point, uh, sorry, 8.0 tablet. 8.0, right. So they're really kind of attacking all sizes of screens possible. We've got, what, a 7, 7.7, 8. I believe it, uh, you know, this, we've got a 10, we've almost everything uh, under the sun. And according to the leak specs from uh, Sam Mobile, we're looking at 4.2 jelly bean, uh, a really good battery of uh, 4,600 milliamp. It's a good size. It's a good size. Super clear. The, the display, it's, it's not like 1920 um, resolution, but it is still considered, uh, 
HD, the GSM, mm -hmm. the camera, it's only five megapixels. So this is going to be along the lines of a average kind of mid, mid level tablet. So if you don't really want to spend the, the, the money or have a, a, the size tablet of a, of a 10 inch, this might be great for you. And I know we have one of the members on Lazy Tech Eyes that wants that middle range tablet that he can hold in one hand, but not, not be too small. And an eight inch seems to be a really good size for that. Yeah, I, d I guess I haven't I haven't actually played with an eight inch tablet yet to yeah. know if it's like I, I know plenty about the seven and kind of how I can use that and that that feels good. That almost feels like the outer edge mm. of one handed use well, to me. Well, this is still going to be two handed because it is a note, so yeah. you still have that's the true. S Pen. Right. Good point. You still have the S Pen. We we just uh, demoed the uh, the Galaxy Note ten point one, and that's a, ever since they upgraded to Jelly Bean, that that's been a really good experience. Um, at least on our experience, mm -hmm. but um, his biggest qualm is he still he, he still feels it's too top heavy or too heavy on the right side when he's trying to do it uh, up in the air and, and mm -hmm. with an eight incher it's you know obviously going to be a little bit smaller and a little uh, bit more compact. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, the, the question in the chat room came up if the eight incher would pass my back pocket test or not, and I Probably think that's not. I think that's I think the seven is just about seven as big right as there. it can. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, eight inch. I mean, I can't imagine. I, I can't imagine it being much different than the seven inch experience. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. I know it's a whole inch and all that sort of thing. But I, mm -hmm. you know, no. But I still feel it's still. It's, you're right. I th I think it's still in that one hand kind of kind of you know range. You know, whereas a ten inch, be, yeah, right. ten inch becomes something where you need the two hands too. So mm -hmm. yeah. I'm much more interested in the, these sizes. It's funny, like when we talked about the, the Sony, the ten inch. It's like for so long I was like, I can't wait for there to be a really good Android, you know, iPad competitor. You know, mm -hmm. but now after the Nexus Seven, I just I'm so much less interested in that larger size. I mean, I know that it has users and, fa and and people who want that that big size, but I still love that seven inch. Range. So I haven't played with an eight inch, but uh, I wonder if it would push, you know, kind of beyond the little kind of the, I feel like that the Nexus seven is just this perfect size, but I'd be interested to play with the eight inch, see if it pushed it beyond the boundary. Yeah. Beyond that kind of comfort level. Mm -hmm. I, I completely agree. The seven feels comfortable to use. It's not overly big. And the 10, anytime I pull out my 10, it's just kind of a little too big. And it feels I like a table. Yeah. In your hand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> completely. <laughs> Um, and then, well, uh, Gina, it looks like LG, I think they actually announced this today. Yeah, LG announced uh, the Optimus G Pro, which is a kind of bigger, beefier version of their the Optimus G. Uh, for the specs, we got quad-core 1.7 gigahertz Snapdragon Pro, 2 gigabytes RAM, 1080p display, 440 PPI, 13 megapixel camera, uh, 3,000 mAh battery, Android 4.1, and this will get released on NTT uh, Docomo in April and possible wider release details unveiled at the Mobile World Conference next month. Uh, the Verge has a nice hands-on, has lots of pictures. This is a nice, this is a nice looking handset. I was kind of most interested in uh, some of the, what's going on in the software. Uh, they've got this, LG's got this thing called slide apps, which are like what Sony's small apps. They're like widget-like applications um, that persist on top of the UI. So you can kind of do two things at the same time. Um, it's, it's, it's a pretty big phone, five inch. Mm -hmm. uh, the other uh, big software feature is a video recording mode called dual video. It lets you record picture in picture view from the front and rear cameras at the same time. The same time. Yeah, which, which, which looks kind of crazy. Looks kind of <laughs> nuts, but kind of cool. <laughs> uh, the two videos can't be saved off to separate files, although the smaller window, window can be positioned anywhere on screen before or during shooting. That is so funny. I, yeah. I feel like a, a couple of months ago, actually, on Tech News Today, there was a camera that I don't know if it was a release camera or something that somebody was working on that did just that, where it was a, a still picture camera, where it was like, all right, you know, if you're the camera person, you're always left out of these amazing group pictures. So how about we put you in there by taking a picture in both directions? So then it's like all these people and then this little box with you <laughs> smiling. Um, for some reason, I think on video, it might actually work better, though. Yes, because I think so. Because it's a little bit more of an active thing. You can kind of be a part of it as opposed to being just that guy in the box where everyone else is standing next to each other. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Narrating or, yeah. 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 Discussing. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know. It's it's a it's total gimmick. And at this point, uh, you know, that's kind of what devices need to do or, or feel like they need to do. Manufacturers need to uh, differentiate themselves. So you see all these gimmicky things. But 
But it's cool. They're still coming out with these ideas that you're like, oh, I surprised you didn't think about that one. Before. Innov- innovation, and that's how, yeah, and right. you know, and every, you know, hopefully one out of ten or whatever sticks and becomes like, oh wow, we didn't, I didn't even think about that mm-hmm. application, and now I can't live without it. Pushes you know, them so. out, out of the box, and yeah. it really puts it on the uh, competitive floor. So yeah, I sure, think it's great, cool, absolutely. So uh, in the story that I've been dying to talk about uh, in the <laughs> wild rumor department, um, this is going to be really interesting. Uh, Droid Life posted, they, they got uh, some sort of tip, uh, whether it's inside Google or inside Motorola or what, what the source exactly is, we don't know. But uh, details about the Motorola X phone. And I want to make sure you're sitting down because this gets wacky. Oh, right. I'm sitting down. So yeah, I see you sitting okay. down. Okay. So uh, what this says is that the Motorola X phone will be the first kind of phone to come out of the Motorola Google kind of merger type thing, um, and it's going to be announced at Google I/O in May. Um, they're currently targeting to release it on July 8th, but that is you know could is subject to change. Who knows what the re- whether the release date will stick? Um, all carriers will be able to sell the X phone. Uh, Verizon will sell it for two hundred ninety nine dollars on contract. All versions will also be sold through the Google Play Store at a, si- at a similar off-contract price to the Nexus line. So you can go to Verizon and buy it, or you can go to Google Play and buy it for all versions of the various carriers or whatever flavors they might have. All re- already right there, that seems to contradict itself. Yes. If you want to unlock the bootloader through Verizon, they will charge a $15 yeah. per month fee. Woo. That's what? the one where I'm like, <laughs> okay. I, I yeah. do not buy this one at all. But, um, <laughs> yeah. If you buy it through Google Play, it comes unlocked with no fee, which that does make sense because that is the right. precedent that's, that's been set. Thing, yeah. um, it's not a Nexus phone per se, but it will come ru- um, running stock Android, but with some bloatware. With some bloatware. And okay. the yeah, bloatware awesome. can apparently be removed once unlocked, which seems a little odd It also, you know, considering that they haven't really sold stuff with bloatware before. And is it the Motorola bloatware? Well, Maybe, I mean, if it's uh, not a Nexus and it's sold, you know, just taking Verizon, for example. Verizon loves to put their bloatware on your phone. Yeah. I can speak from, from years of experience on that. So it, does, it wouldn't surprise me at all if it wasn't a Nexus that Verizon would insist on that in some way. Yeah, There's just enough kind of contradictory stuff in this to kind of but, doubt it. I don't doubt it that there's fishy. a... But, yeah, it does but here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. There's Tell enough. The thing. There's enough data in. There's enough, um, you know, facts and contradictory stuff to doubt and question the source. But it is just crazy enough to make me think that Google and Motorola have got something cooking. Yes. yes. And if, yeah. That, yeah. And if I, these are concepts that they're talking about possibly doing, and who knows what they end up with come May, mm-hmm. this could be potentially very interesting. Mm-hmm. That's my that's my take on it. Half empty, half full. Half empty. There half you full. go. Yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> I'd yang agree with to that. Yang. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. But um, but it looks like they're gonna go they're gonna go big in for Google I/O uh, for Motorola. So, I would I would love to see it. Um, yeah, I have no Q doubt that there's some. Th- does that mean now we start tracking the Google I/O rumors scale? Is this is, kind of there? Uh, yeah. Starting. I mean, we're five months, we're four months away. Like yeah. now, we start tracking these rumors. Gina, will you be doing uh, the Google I/O this year? Um, I, I I hope so. I think so. I'm hoping. Yeah. Depending on you know when when tickets start. I, I, have they announced when they're gonna? They start? They have not. Though? They're gonna announce in February when tickets in go. In February, sale. right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh. Yeah, I'm, I am gonna try to make it though. I've gone like every every year like the last three years I think. So. Uh, awesome. The goodies are really good, and I have been hoping that that Google and Motorola would do kind of the ultimate Google phone. But I would be really sad if Google starts selling a phone with with quote unquote bloatware in the Play Store. I, you know, I've always liked that the Nexus line was just this pure Google experience, and I just, I hope they don't, I hope they don't do that. But if the blo- if the bloatware is some sort of subsidy that keeps the price down and lets you choose your carrier or stay unlocked, I mean, like, I, I don't like the bloatware either. I do like, I, I'm fascinated by the idea of being able to unload the bloatware. Like, I yeah. want to find the users who's like, for a no, month for a monthly fee. I want that bloatware. <laughs> you know, like, I think, you know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the Verizon charging the monthly fee for getting rid of the bloatware. That, if that's true and that happens, like, that's crazy. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's... Unlocking the bootloader. Yeah. I mean, like, I just feel like, mo- I mean, most Verizon customers are going to have no idea what that means. Like, right. it just, it, it's just, that that's where it went off the rails for me. I was yeah. like, oh, this is, yeah. this is just hopeful. Thanks. Mo- Motorola created a whole developer line right. for, for the M. I mean, that's what yeah. this is. And then you bought it through Motorola, not through Verizon, but it has the Verizon on it. So mm. I don't know if they're going to do anything like that or through the Google Play Store and you don't have to worry about the bloatware. That would be awesome. But yeah. if this is anything true, then I don't know if it's random everyday person, not going to care. Right. No, but absolutely. Us, yeah. um, 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and I mean, if Verizon's selling it for $299 on contract, but you can also get it through the Play Store off contract for a price similar to the Nexus line, which is $299, like, yeah. uh, then I, uh, there's a big disconnect there. Why on earth would you go to Verizon and pay the same price and get it on right. contract? It just doesn't make any sense. So we'll see. It was kind of funny, though. I was going back in the dock to uh, a year ago, earlier today, and just looking at some of the stories that we covered a year ago and kind of looking at some of the rumors and all that kind of stuff. It's really funny to go back in time and check out the rumors. No no matter what, when we bring rumors on the show, I think we spent a couple of episodes like pressing this point. It's all about fun. It's all about just like, you know, showing what's out there and, mm-hmm. and dreaming and seeing yep. where it goes. It's not news necessarily. It's just fun to talk about. But it is hilarious to see how wrong most of them <laughs> end up being. But, but what I think is what I think is interesting is that I really don't think anybody purely makes anything up. Like like truly, it, is, it takes a, a special kind of sociopath to make. <laughs> and up, there are those. And there are those. Yeah, but to make up this information and send it to a blog and start this whole thing. Like so so clearly mm-hmm. when when this sort of thing happens, it could be the kind of thing like, hey, I talked to my buddy who works at Google and he said they're thinking about doing this and then telephone happens yeah oh, totally. and, I, and that's what i love seeing is is like and where when you get the rumor where did the, what's the original what's the or, origination of that of that uh little bit of data and what when how did it get manipulated from the time of announcement between the time of the rumor that's what i'm fascinated by mm-hmm. but it begs the question though so we had the nexus 4 get announced in the fall right, right and come out like november or so May would be about six, seven months after that, and it's not a Nexus phone. Nexus. Like, is there some sort of schedule we're going to start see coming out now where we get a new Nexus phone, but then a new Android-like phone, new Nexus phone? Like, you know, how mm-hmm. are these updates going to roll as the years go on? So Sure, yeah, so. sure. Trying to find the pattern. That's all I'm doing. I understand. I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. Um, all right, let's, uh, since we don't have a, a general news block this, this week, um, I just thought, Hey, let's throw in a few just back-to-back emails. So we're going to do a, a few emails back-to-back here. The first one actually wasn't an email. Again, as as uh, we had on the show last week, came from the All About Android community page on Google+. Plus. Captain Temerity, bringer Woo! of donuts uh, many, many times in the past, and we thank you, and you don't need to ever do it again, but thank you, uh, said and posted, said, All right, everybody, it's been a year. Where are we with car audio that integrates with Android? Any improvements or anything we've we've got an audi with a cassette deck and it's hurting my feelings because i think <laughs> somewhere around a year ago we talked a we lot did. about how oh i think you're gonna start to see more of this in android in dash because that was a cs yeah. we saw mm-hmm. we saw little tinkers of that and it just didn't seem to take off you know although yeah. i still love that ford sync man i got another zip car with a ford sync and i synced up my phone that was ford pretty, cool. pretty not android pretty based, but it was pretty cool yeah yeah so. i mean but it syncs but it syncs across so, so what we got? there are a couple of options and uh maybe when we talked about this the first time there was probably only one there was the yeah. power or the sorry the parrot right. asteroid which i've never used um, I, I saw it at ces last year yeah it was at at that time it was pretty innovative very cool mm-hmm. um I, I'm not sure what they've uh, improved on the line right now, though. Yeah, you know they've put they posted some updates, and uh, it, but by and large, I think it seems to be one of the better solutions. Um, having said that, you know you run into the possibility like they run their own marketplace. I think a lot of times this happens where they run their own marketplace. Um, it's limited, so it's not necessarily an open wide play store. Uh, and support support for that marketplace could conceivably just go away at a, at any time, really, if they stopped supporting it. Um, but I've heard that that line is still pretty good. The Pioneer App Radio Two that, that sounds promising uh, supports MHL and HDMI app mirroring, although it requires a hundred and twenty dollar Android connection kit on top of the pretty expensive device. I think it's somewhere around four hundred five hundred bucks. Um, it also requires, this is kind of weird, that you install their keyboard app on your device, and that's so that their in-dash unit can properly control your device if that's what you need it to do. So there, you're replacing whatever your replacement keyboard is with theirs. Interesting. And you got to manually switch anytime. I'm not, I'm not a fan of that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it doesn't sound very good. No. 
Yeah. And that just enables the in dash thing to control the phone. So it's almost it's like right. it's like a back door almost. Yeah, it kind of sounds that yeah. way. Yeah. So Jason, so, I have a question. Do you know if Tasker or anything that uses could it switch like if you used uh, NFC to switch your keyboard if you set it down? Yeah. Do you think you could do that? I, that would relieve a little bit of the problem of that that would yeah, that would if if that would work. You know, it's it's Android. It's kind of like the PC, right? There's there's there always seems to be some sort of weird random backdoor right. way that you can get these things to kind of happen. Is the majority of the people going to do that? Uh, are the majority of people going to do that? So Probably not. Though. Um, yeah, I, I would imagine that you could possibly program something in Tasker to do that. I don't know the answer to that uh, for right. sure. Right. Hypothetically. But, yeah. yeah. And, and I mean, we also did um, in, in the past talk about uh, the fact that when you're entering in the keyboard, you can pull down your notification tray. It gives you that a keyboard selector. Yeah. So you could just do that and switch over. It's just... But wow. every time like, you, you need get to do that, car, yeah. like every time, yeah. Uh, yeah, not not very awesome. Uh, Vise Tech, that's V A I S Tech, it stands for uh, they have a uh, vehicle infotainment center for Android smartphone integration, and uh, they have a solution that works with a number of phones. They detail it. I'm gonna have the link in the show notes at twit.tv/aaa. They tout complete mirror and control of your Android powered devices. Oh, that's cool. And mm -hmm. uh, so this one sounds. Kind of okay. like the the one to kind of look into here. Um, they sync it across, and it you know hopefully it controls. I think the the overarching thing here though to remember is, to realize is that Android, when it comes to kind of like USB sync and everything that you're used to doing on platforms like iOS, the the solutions just aren't as simple as they are on iOS. They're, like they're, they're, there's a subscription fee to this one too. Oh yeah, you can you can buy a, a bigger unit and get outside of the script subscription uh, fee uh, if if you have the money, I suppose. That's but, pretty cool though. Um, yeah. yeah, but it's it, you know again it's expensive and the subscription is like two hundred sixty five dollars a year. Starting. It. Starting. Yeah. Yep. Oh, so. Wow. So I do a lot of driving. <laughs> I know, right? So it's it's disappointing. I wish there were more options, Captain Temerity. Um, it doesn't seem like we're there yet, and I really hope that. At some point, Google kind of cracks that nut um, and makes this more of a possibility uh, for developer, or for you know, hardware manufacturers and developers to you know to make it easy for them to do this because there's certainly a market there. Just the hardware isn't as you know specked out uh, similarly across devices as it I'm, is on iOS. I'm just happy to hear that I'm not the last person on earth who drives around a car with a cassette deck because I've got this just really <laughs> really old car and I use a very high tech like tape with a line out <laughs> like, <laughs> plug it into my phone no. i actually like walked into a best buy because i needed a new one because my old one had like melted in the car and the guy was like wait you need what <laughs> and i so i told him and he was like uh, he actually laughed at me and was like maybe you should like get a new car and i was like look <laughs> no judging no yeah, judging right look that's not <laughs> happening okay you're not helping the situation <laughs> just just give me one of those fake cassette tapes with the line out man all right <laughs> 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 That's awesome. Uh, hey, you know, ultimately, whatever works. The 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 headphone out. That works great for me. The, the, yeah. that's, and that's exactly so, what you're doing. Sometimes a simple solution works. I know. You know, that's the, it's yeah. true. So, yeah. <laughs> there's there's no subscription fee on that one. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we we got an email or a message from Ron from Texas who says you had a viewer looking for a way to define a word and jelly uh, uh, define a word. This was our last episode when someone uh, written in and said you know on iOS you could tap a word, highlight it, and just define as one of the options. And I this is kind of a, a deal breaker on my switch to Android. How do I do this in Android? So Ron from Texas says, in Jelly Bean, I simply, I simply swipe up and say, Google, define, insert word. Depending on the word, you get other info, such as, is, is it a noun or verb, showing it using a sentence. I did this the other day. Synonyms plus links to a few dictionary sites if you need more. And Ron says, it is time we embrace the awesomeness of Google Now. And I could not agree more. I absolutely love Google Now. Love it, love it. Yeah. The problem, though, with defining words in Google Now <laughs> is if you don't pronounce the word. So if it's a word that you don't know, presumably, right, because that's why you're defining it, you might not know how to pronounce it correctly. Mm -hmm. uh, so it can trip up. So the word that I always use to test dictionary apps is virago, V-I-R-A-G-O. It means like a sort of loud and scolding woman, right? Oh. So I just, I just think it's a funny word. I love that word. And so I tried this at Google Now. I said define virago. It thought I said Farago. It thought I said There I Go. It said it thought I said Verizon Go. Like it never actually got the word that I was saying. So when you use the define, you know, speech uh, um, 
But when you use define and you, you use kind of the, the voice to text feature, you're risking that it's not going to quite get the word that, the way that you want it. That said, I use define on Google, you know, just from from my keyboard all the time. And Google now can do that. So that's definitely an option. So, OK, thank so you, Ron, from Texas. First of all, I've never heard of the word Virago. So thank <laughs> you for that. I think, I, think I, I, I think I've got a couple of Viragos in my life, to be honest with you. <laughs> Define Virago. <laughs> so, okay, so let's let's try it here. We might as well. Okay. I have Google now up here, Chad. If you want to take that, um, and I, I'm really curious. I want to see. I want to see this work. All right. Define Virago. Verizon Go. Verizon Go. Right. Yeah, mine, mine got Farago. Farago. Yeah, Farago. <laughs> I got that one too. Interesting. And if it's a Verizon phone, then I would imagine it would come back with like Verizon Go is awesome. <laughs> um, <laughs> whatever it is. <laughs> but what I, I wonder if our accents get in the way. Let me try. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah let me see. Yeah. <laughs> Filipino accent. Define Virago. I like to. I like how we yell it. Just yeah. Farago. Yeah. Yell at our phone. I like to yell it. Yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> Define Google. You have a, a ways to. Go or you have a ways to Virago. 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 Yeah. There we Verizon go. Verizon go. All right, on to our next email. <laughs> uh, qu a quick one from uh, Keith wrote in and says, "Hey Jason, Ron, and Gina, please don't sleep on the Arcos TV Connect. Let me explain. We talked last week about uh, some of the C CES stuff, and Arcos had a very curious TV Connect device that was uh, Google TV esque, but not running Google TV." And uh, Keith says, I'm an early adopter to Google TV. Its lack of rooting ability and not a proper SDK for developers has hampered growth in the geek community. I understand why Google would, would want the device locked down at first, hoping the TV industry to allow streaming from the Google TV device. At this point, if they haven't allowed streaming, I don't think it'll change. Why not open the SDK, allow rooting, and get this device rolling with developers? With that said, I've been using XBMC on a Raspberry Pi, and this is exactly what Google TV should be. With that being said, twice... XBMC doesn't work on Google TV, SDK issues, and the Arcos TV Connect would allow XBMC to work. A release candidate has been rele released for Android, and it works pretty well. Free my Google TV. And for those who don't know, X XBMC is the Xbox Media Center, um, kind of an open source developer, geek-based kind of project that is pretty sweet, and I know Boxy uses it, and some other folks you know, have adopted it. Um, and yeah, no, no, no nothing, nothing against the Arcos TV, and it could be hackable and let you do your XBMC. I still think that, that that audience that does that is a very small audience and not as lucrative to the white mainstream, you know, uh, Best Buy going crowd who's sure. buying TV devices. That's the that's the challenge with it. Um, I hey, if I can get my hands on an Arcos TV Connect, I'd play the hell out of it. I think it'd be I think it looks a lot of fun. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, cool. Well, thank you, Keith. Yeah, if XBMC came with yeah. uh, you know with something like that, then it would be yeah. an out of the box. Yeah, I mean, that wouldn't happen, but. Yeah. Yeah, I, I see what you mean. Somebody going into Best Buy just wants it to be that way and not have to hack into it or or reconfigure. Exactly, things just plug it in and have it work. Like the 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 the, uh, the co-star. What is sure. it called? The uh, from the Vizio Vizio co-star. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. But. Cool. Well, uh, we've got a lot of apps to talk about, so let's get started. All right, so uh, this ties right into what you, the email that you just read. Unofficial build of XBMC for Android uh, is hitting the internets, and uh, you can get that running on your Android device. Uh, HD playback is enabled. Uh, they've just kind of cleaned up the uh, the interface, made, made it a little bit nicer to use. And this kind of got me thinking... Also, and it's somewhat related, well, I'm going to make it related, uh, <laughs> first Cyanogen Mod 10.1 Nightly shows up for the Nexus Q. Ooh. So. Interesting. <laughs> My Nexus Q might have to get dusted off now. Yeah, I know. I was thinking that. I was like, where did I put that box? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I didn't so give it away, did I? If you could flash, the, yeah, yeah, Cyanogen Mod on a Nexus Q and then install XBMC, you've got a... A three hundred dollar uh, XBMC box well, or sphere. Bookmark that story. I'm gonna go look at that when I get home. <laughs> Somebody That's do just, it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, righty. <laughs> Somebody do it and email us or shoot a video or something. Hey man, or if I had an extra we'll day in the week, I, I'll try to do it this weekend. I'll try to do it. Um, hectic, and I got a, a big 
a big list of things to do this weekend, but that that seems like the fun tinkering I haven't done yeah. in a while, so maybe I'll do it. it. It'll take something that you probably aren't using anymore and make it. It's useful literally again. in a box on a shelf yeah. because I can't bring my because I opened it, so I can't sell it. Like I want, you know, right. like, you know, because there are stuff. Every now and then I look on eBay, and there's some people who are smart enough to not open it, and they're selling it. Oh, as a, it's yeah, a collector's yeah, item. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Gina, do you still have your queue? Is it uh, holding down a stack of papers at, the, at this is, moment? Yeah, it has been reboxed and put somewhere, but not. But I was just reading the story today, thinking, oh, I should, I should just, I, well, I got to find. It, where is it? Because I have to say, I really do love the the volume control and the tap, like being able to tap so the queue to, to, mm-hmm. for, for the interface. Uh, so it sounds kind of cool. So yeah, it is reboxed. It's still here. I kind of feel like it's a you know I don't know. It's a souvenir of sorts. Yeah. I don't want to hold on to it. But I did open it and play and use it for a while. So yeah, I'm not gonna sell it. Uh, uh, Tony, do you have one? And if so, are you gonna root yours and throw cyanide mod on it? No. Okay. No. You're not going to, I'm or not, you? I don't have one. Oh, okay. No, oh, no. All right. Well, <laughs> even if I did, I probably wouldn't go uh, do that. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of on the fence, but I'm I, I want it. I want it to live. I want it to be useful. It's Let so it pretty. Oh, <laughs> well, there we go. I've been running Plex on the Google TV, and that seems that seems mostly okay. And that, yeah. and that is a, a build of XBMC, right? It's a fork. Yeah. Yes, yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yep. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, next bit of app news. Opera Ice, not to be confused with Opera Mini, is coming to Android in February. So brand new browser, and it's going to include WebKit, which is uh, which Opera has never included before. Uh, I guess the CEO of Opera announced this just recently to Pocket Lint. And I'll be honest, I haven't looked at Opera. You know, every time I, I look at Opera, I've, I've reviewed Opera several times for Lifehacker kind of over the years. It's a great browser. Like, they, they make a really great browser. I've just never switched. Op- like I'm always like, in theory, this is amazing. Like I love, you know, there's always like kind of innovative, you know, short shortcuts or gestures, I imagine, and in, in, in ice, uh, which will be really cool. I just at this point it would take a lot to move me away from Chrome. Uh, but I just love that's operas around and still kind of innovating and you know, offering an alternative. Opera is the saddest story when it comes to the web and the internet. No. They they are there. They're they're working their butts off in Scandinavia and they're innovating. They came up with tab browsing. Mm-hmm. They yes. came up with all these things and they just cannot get a leg up in the market. I they mean, can't literally, make it that. Yeah, I, I mean know. literally, I mean I mean we I mean we've all been covering tech for I mean go it's coming on for me like almost ten years now. Opera has always been the sad, like, yeah. oh, look, look what Opera's doing. The oh, sto- just a matter of time until Firefox has it. <laughs> yeah, you know, the like, story you know, has not changed. Exactly, in that it's of time. the same thing. I just yeah. always feel bad when Opera, whenever Opera, because they're like, hey, look at us. We're, you know, we're we're standards friendly, and we're like HTML5 years before anybody else was, and they just can't, they just can't do it. I don't know why. Yep. So. Yep. It's Tragic. sad because it's like, it's like it's a good product. Like it's it's really yeah. a good product. Every time I review it, I'm like, this is I'm surprised. This is great. And then I, I forget yeah. about it. No oh. joke. Every every computer every new computer I get, I inst- I download Chrome, I download Firefox, I download Opera, and I never open it. I just never like it, no reason. I just uh, I don't know. Oh, so. that's one more step than me. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> I, I mean, I've installed like, it in the past, but I don't I don't install it like. When I, you know, start up a new computer. Well, because I'm always like, oh, time. I need it to test. I need to yeah, test across no, all browsers okay, and stuff enough, like right, that. Fair, but I, right. I still, I never open it, though. I never, I never actually do that testing. So. Right. And right. now all the syncing that Chrome does. Ugh, yeah, well, the syncing. I tweeted about that earlier. So I'm, switch, so I'm switching jobs. So I'm switching computers. I got on my new work computer, and I just logged into Chrome, and I walked away, came, went to a meeting, came back, and all my bookmarks were there, mm-hmm. my yeah. browsing history, like every like all, like passwords, like everything was just blink. It was just there. It, uh, I love the Chrome team. They're awesome. they're, they're, they're great. Well, and that's kind of part of the brilliance of uh, what Google has done with the Android operating system yeah. is they've built these things that once you use them and if you buy into kind of their whole kind of offering, their ecosystem, it's really hard for you to go backwards. You know, yeah, once I once agree. Chrome came on Android and brought the sync along with oh, it and it's everything, amazing. it's I mean, it's next to impossible for me to consider putting a different browser on there and using it for anything other than maybe a very specific reason. Like, yeah. oh, well, that one does Flash, so yes. I'll open that when I need to do a Flash video. And even then, I never do that. Yeah, you know? It's no. never something that I think about anymore. Here's something fun. Yeah. Go back to the stock browser and just play with it and see and f- feel the difference. The the original the Android browser and uh-huh. it's still on your phone. Yeah. Mm. Go see what it's like. Mm. It, it's a, yeah, so fun. Know. Yeah. Very a lot of fun. Is it still on the phone? Even Jelly Bean? Yeah. It's still yeah, there. I don't, yep. I don't know it's if still I have there. it. Uh, not on my Oh, it is. Look, browser. Yeah. Blue, browser. blue icon. Yeah. Wow. Yep. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> see, I know. <laughs> we are so blind to what used to be uh, something that we would open every every day. We're futurist people. I never look back. <laughs> That's so funny. I could have swore I didn't have it on my phone. Yeah.
<laughs> well, well, sometimes it's fun to look back, and that's especially when we uh, get reminded of some apps that we love to get updated and get a nice oh. little media update. And one of those apps, which is one that Jason uh, talked about on Both a show way back when, it was uh, episode 45, uh, uh, One Louder Apps, One Weather, um, which is on my phone after Jason did his demo in the arena. I love this weather app. Uh, they finally announced version 2 uh, with some great updates. It's got tablet support, a refined mm. UI. Optimized radar section, added map pin, improved ongoing notifications, and my favorite, lock screen widgets, uh, which just make using your, your phone with uh, Jelly Bean that much cooler. So, uh, yeah, very cool. One, la uh, one Ladder Apps is a great uh, development house, and uh, I love One Weather. So if you have that, make sure you check it out. It's great. And then another app that um, I know the chat room has been buzzing about, wondering when we're going to get around talking about it, but uh, Tasker, which has gotten a lot of mentions on this episode. Yeah, <laughs> um, apparently so. Guess a, uh, I didn't even know. I know, yeah. <laughs> I didn't Chad, know it was later in the end down. Um, so uh, Tasker is getting uh, a, what some might think a long overdue yes. uh, update to its UI. Um, it's getting the holo treatment. Um, right, it's holo, right? Holo? Holo. Oh, yeah, yeah, whatever. Holo. Um, but yeah, so, uh, it's getting a complete total redesign. So if you've been, um, hesitant to dive into Tasker, now might be the time considering that's a little more UI friendly. So it really is the problem with Tasker at this point that I see, I still use it, but I use it for pretty much one thing. If it's after 1030 and I'm plugged in, mute my phone, except for these people. Yeah. That's the mm -hmm. only thing I use Tasker for. The problem with Tasker right now is that it had, it was great early on because, phones didn't ship with the ability to kind of customize some of yep. the things that it enables. Right. And now a lot of those things are already kind of presented to device devices when you buy them. Well, and, and also Tasker, Tasker is a specific type of app that falls in a category for me. Mm. Apps that I would love to use that I never have the time to configure. Right. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, and for Tasker. Right. I mean, do you use Tasker time? Or? I tried. Right. It, it, yeah, because there's certain things, like when I got to work, I wanted to do certain things, yeah. and it didn't really connect with the GPS too well for a little bit. Right. I just I just kind of gave up after. I tried it for like three months. And you really want it to work, too, because really, it's $8. All, <laughs> you, yeah, it's $8. You get all excited about the potential. It's like, oh, I'll, I'll optimize my battery. I'll, I'll control when it goes to Wi-Fi and yeah. blah, blah. And I just, I, I literally didn't even download it. I didn't even buy it. But I, I cool. love that Tasker exists, that it can yeah. exist. Like, yeah. I feel like Tasker is the app that I'm like, yes, this is Android right here. You know, totally. this is what you do. I don't have the time to do this configuration, but I could if I had to. Well, the, <laughs> well there you go. Uh, you know, Android Community Challenge. Go to our all about Android community page on Google Plus or email into the show. Tell us how you're using Tasker. Give us examples of how you set it up. Are you actually a Tasker power user? Because I'm really curious because I think more people are like me than anybody else and just don't have the time. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. totally. I'll pay uh, you 10 bucks to do it for me. Yeah. <laughs> That's Program a good idea. my Tasker, please. That's a good idea. Uh, there are pages uh, dedicated to yeah. sharing these profiles yeah. and everything too. So if you like what you can do with it but you don't have the time to program it, there are ways to kind of yeah. find, find that out there and you know, people that maybe have the time can do it for you. Cool. Just like that. All right. Um, so we're going to take a, a just a quick a little bit here. And uh, we thought we'd just kind of say, okay, I get a new phone tomorrow and I need to install a bunch of things. Not cons not counting Google Apps. Mm. I need so to install. Default, so default, like Google so Music, like, Gmail, yes, exactly. all that's all off the, the table. All the all stuff the that table. you kind yeah. of expect to be on there, although some phones you buy in them and they don't have some of those installed immediately. Yep. Uh, Google Voice might be outside of that a little bit because that's also a service. But anyways, that's that's yeah. counted um, as off limits as well. Um, what are the five apps that we install first on our device? What can we not be without? Um, and we're not going to spend a whole lot of time on these, but maybe we can just kind of run through it and, you know, just a couple of words on why, why we picked it. But yep. um, okay, so right at the top of my list, and this has actually been a very recent uh, kind of add uh, to this category for me is Evernote. Um, I used to be a big catch user, and I'm not sure at what point I switched to Evernote, but I did to try it out. And the more I started using it for notes and everything like that, and it's syncing and it's audio recording capabilities, um, I just kind of got locked into it, and I love using it, Evernote. In an alternate universe, there are phones that only run Evernote. Like it's just yeah. like it's, it's such a platform that you can build off yeah. of, yeah. So, mm -hmm. sure. I, yeah, primarily um, it, right now, especially for songwriting, it comes in incredibly handy. Yeah. Have an idea, record it with audio, yeah. uh, just hum cool. it out, Very put cool. my ly lyrics in there. Then when I'm at home and I want to like play it, I just pull up the note, and you know, it's That's it's awesome. like it's like a total songwriting suite for me right now. I love Evernote. Cool. Um, 
Plume for Twitter. Uh, mm -hmm. Love Plume featured on the show. Probably don't have to go into detail on that, but it's just a, a great Twitter app. And I keep coming back to it. Any any Twitter apps that I use, I always come back to Plume. Um, Pocket. Pocket is one of the read it later style apps. And, uh, you know, again, it has an account that syncs online. So you log in. If you read an article, you just you add it to your Pocket and it's there forever. Um, not to mention, I would add, if you're using Pocket, install the Chrome uh, add-on. Puts yeah, a little Pocket icon it. up there. And then anything you're reading you don't have time for, you just throw it in your pocket, and read it syncs to your device wherever you are. It's awesome. Cool. Yeah, I know, Nikki. Pocket is read it later, but yeah, yeah there you go. Uh, last pass. <laughs> last pass. If I didn't have that installed on my phone, I probably wouldn't know how to get into like 90% of the things that I do on the internet. <laughs> That's kind of the point. It's a password manager, um, encrypted password manager. It's just awesome. It's totally worth it. What is it, like a dollar a month to use their premium service? Yeah. Yeah, I I love LastPass too. I couldn't do anything on my phone if I didn't have if I didn't have LastPass. It's really cheap. It's a couple bucks a month. Yeah, I mean it's it's uh, so inexpensive and and so awesome that it it doesn't matter. I I will happily pay that as long as I need to. Um, super cool. And then finally, Dropbox. Um, Dropbox. Just the fact that the fact that I don't have to make a concerted effort to take that file that's on my computer and you know plug in my phone and transfer it over. Again, this really comes in handy right now. When I'm writing music, I just throw the MP3 in that folder and I walk out the door. And then five minutes later, I'm on the road. If I want to test it in the car, I pull up my Dropbox and it's synced right there. I just don't have to think about it. I don't want to think about things. So uh, I'm not a thinker. Yeah, I'm not a thinker. I'm just a doer. Uh, so anyway, so Evernote, Plume, Pocket, LastPass, and Dropbox would be my picks. Cool. What about you, Ron? Um, Good picks. Chad's going to get mad at me at my picks because I just swapped out my second one. But um, So don't use the lower thirds. I'm sorry, Chad. Uh, um, but yeah, so so what I tried to do was I looked at what everybody else's list and I didn't want to play duplicates, but Evernote, um, Dropbox, those are ones I use a lot. But what, for me, the ones that I absolutely need, I can't live without, um, I'm an old, old uh, email admin that I'm using, you know, my, my own server. I'm not on Gmail. I'm on my own archaic POP3 email. Um, so I actually, for my email, I can't live without K9, e uh, K9 mail. Um, it is just a great, very simple email client, uh, that allows me to quickly set up my uh, various pop three accounts and, uh, it gives me total control over what I need to do. Um, it's, you know, not as pretty or not as uh, bells and whistles as Gmail or some of the other, you know, email apps might be out there, but K9 has always has never steered me wrong from day one on Android, like way back on the G1. Yeah, it's been around Does for it a long time. Does it as well yeah. or just pop? Um, it, I believe it can do IMAP. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's just a full featured one. Um, I've only, only done pop three, um, but I'm pretty sure it can handle IMAP as well. Um, and we can probably confirm that. Um, uh, IMAP push. IMAP push. There you go. Okay. Um, and I really should switch to IMAP. I know it's just another <laughs> one of those, like, I just don't have the time. I know. I know. Years of email. You have no idea. You'll pay $10. <laughs> I'm going to switch them. <laughs> yeah. No, there are services that do that though. But yeah, anyway, that's another conversation. <laughs> um, so the one that I swapped out just now, which I realized was, um, probably the app that gets the most amount of data usage on my phone at any given time is Pocket Casts. Um, our, our friends over at Shifty mm -hmm. Jelly, yep. um, it has become my de facto podcast listening application. Um, I, my drive's up here to the Brick House uh, for Twit. I'm listening to podcasts. When I go running, I'm listening to podcasts. And it's always through Pocket Cast, and it keeps me up to date. Um, and they like to promote us, which is always good. Um, but, yeah, so Pocket Cast is great. I mean, honestly, I can't live without it. So that's wonderful. Um, Twitter, of all the uh, social networks, whether it's, you know, Foursquare, Instagram, Path, Facebook, blah, blah, Twitter is the one that I use the most. Um, and it used to be the official Twitter app, but now my Twitter install is Falcon Pro. Um, I reviewed it on the show a couple weeks ago when it came out. Falcon Pro is awesome. And Chad is pumping his fist in support of my decision. Love and he's Falcon Pro. Yeah. Um, Falcon Pro is great. I mean, and really still the only thing that's missing is multiple account support. But um, I'm, 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 I keep the official Twitter app on my phone to do multiple accounts. But for my personal account, I'm, I'm living on Falcon Pro. Um, and it's great. Um, even though I have a phone, I do a tremendous amount of business on Skype. Um, and so Skype has become a must have on my phone, uh, purely for conference calls and for getting, you know, um, I'm doing a lot more IMing through Skype, which unfortunately I don't really like, but, um, but I have to, it's become a reality in my business. Um, considering that it's free and that it's Skype, uh, it's great. So, uh, and it, it actually it was really buggy early on, but now it's pretty solid. Um, so Skype is a must have. And my last one is a little more uh, surprising, but I realized as I, for this, I went through my phone. I was looking to see the apps that I use the most amount of data from. Mm -hmm. And I realized that I'm, you know, in addition to tech and in addition to comics, I'm actually a pretty big movie buff. Mm. And I actually find myself um, 
I try to go to the movies at least once a week. And in doing that, there's lots of conversations as to what's playing. And so movies by Flickster has become my must must have go-to app for that. Mm -hmm. Although I could use Google now and pull up the movie listings in that, which is very cool. But uh, Flickster has got trailers. It's got uh, stuff integrated into it. And, and they have a pretty good tablet interface as well. They have well, a great right? tablet interface. But for me, what's great is that in the theaters, I can set the favorites of my of my theaters. And I know the, I you know, the, yes, there's a theater close to me in San Francisco, but I prefer to go to this one a little further, what's playing there. Um, and movies is an app that I use, I use way more than I thought I did. So Rotten Tomatoes is really big help. Yeah, they're for great. Those things. So, yeah. yep. So there's my five. Sweet. Nice. All right. All right, Gina, you're up next. All right. Uh, so the first thing that I install, um, installed them on the Galaxy Nexus when I got it was this app called Minimalistic Text. Uh, it's a widget that you can. That's a slightly tasker esque in that it's a little difficult to configure, uh, but you can basically display anything in just really, really nice looking font. Uh, you know, you can really just make a really beautiful looking uh, widget on your home screen to tell you whatever you want: uh, the time, the date, oh, the, the weather, your battery, how much data have you used. I just use it to do uh, date and the current temperature and it just looks really nice it's just plain type very pretty typography it's just words uh, but it, you can make you can, you can make your home screen just look really nice so I, I like min minimalistic text even though it's a little bit of a, a learning curve in the configuration department but you just configure once and you add the widget to your home screen it looks really nice uh, dog catcher the other thing I do on my phone a lot is listen to podcasts Dog Catcher is my podcast client of choice at the moment. Although I don't know, I got to tell you, after hearing Ron, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about checking out podcasts. Uh, handles audio, video, all my subscriptions. Just love Dog Catcher. That's kind of kind of my old, old standby. Uh, this is obviously a plug for the app that I, <laughs> that I develop and I install it because I actually do use it, but also because I develop it. Uh, but to do that text for Android is a simple to do list app. It's just a uh, text, plain text based, syncs to Dropbox. And, uh, and like I said, I build that app. So, you know, full disclosure on that one. But of course, it's one of the first things that I install on every device because I need to make sure that it actually works. <laughs> Um, the other thing I do on my phone, especially recently, because I've got a, a fairly new infant in the house, is just take a lot of pictures, and Flickr is my photo sharing network of choice. So I use the official Flickr app, which has gotten a lot better just recently. Yahoo has taken a renewed interest in Flickr recently, so the, the web app and the mobile apps have all gotten better. Um, kind of, I'm just constantly uploading pictures of the baby and constantly checking out to see, you know, which one of my friends favorited them and, and comments and, and that kind of thing. So that's that that that's great. The Flickr app has gotten way way better. Are you using um, Flickr more now than you were, you know, because it seemed to have like a resurgence suddenly. It did. It did. I, you know, I, I decided when the baby was born this back in the fall, I was like, where am I going to share my photos? I kind of had, had the big decision, the Google Plus, Facebook or Flickr kind of decision. Yeah, awesome. And I just said, you know, I, I love Flickr. Like I've always loved Flickr. I've always had a pro account, even when it was dead and it was just tumbleweed, you know, no one going, going, using it. And that's when I decided I was like, I'm just going to use it. I know there aren't a lot of people here, but I know that my, my relatives really want to see the baby. So they'll, they will come to Flickr. Yep. People really want to see your pictures will come there and then after i started using it again heavily uh they kind of released their big their big updates in the mobile apps and so a lot of my friends have come back uh awesome. so i've been really happy about that resurgence i just i really like Flickr's uh, permissions too like i can set i can set pictures pictures to you know friends and family only and issue guest passes so my relatives don't actually have to create a yahoo account uh so yeah Flickr's my for sharing uh network of choice and I just use the official app and finally I love Foursquare uh, it's the only location thing I really do and I just use the official Foursquare app um, I love it to just kind of have a history of like of where I've been and, I, and increasingly I've been using it for recommendations of like show me something nearby that a friend of mine has left a tip at and uh, I have a lot of friends on the east coast I have a lot of friends in the west coast it, it's really fun to kind of keep track of, of where people have been and making lists and, and this app has, also, has actually gotten a lot better recently too a lot more specials a lot more lists a lot more images people sharing photos so I check in on Foursquare a lot now like Ron I didn't include I, I spent most of my time in the actual official Google app we didn't include those here. And uh, I also love LastPass, but didn't want to do a duplicate. And I also use things like Evernote and Dropbox. But, uh, but, but in the interest of keeping it unique, these are my five. Minimalistic text, uh, dog catcher, to do the text. Flickr and Foursquare. I, I love right. how I love how everyone's list and and I would include I could make an argument for at least one app that all of you have recommended to include in a five, mm -hmm. which is it's, it's, it's cool. Mm -hmm. so. yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, Tony. All right, Tony. Um, I can't live without a flashlight. 
I got a, <laughs> I got a, I got an, an eight year old and and a six month old, and things are going underneath the couch, the bed, <laughs> underneath the car. Um, so yeah, flashlight. So um, the app is called Flashlight. It is literally called because there's a ton of flashlight apps. Ton. Yeah. Um, when the one that I use isn't the one that is up there. But oh, see, all, that's what I, that, I see. And I wondered, but this was this was called the flashlight. Same concept. Yeah. It uses the LED flash of the phone versus using the screen as a flashlight, which mm -hmm. I can't stand. But yeah, it actually uses the LED flash of the phone, mm -hmm. and it and uh, very very handy. Um, the second thing I um, want to recommend was SMS Backup Plus. And what's really nice about this is it actually backs up all your text messages to your Gmail account as a separate label. Yep. So it doesn't get interwoven into your inbox or anything like that, which is really nice. But if you ever want to go back and look at a conversation you have with somebody, um, you don't have to look on your phone. You can look on your computer or wherever you can get your email. And that can be very handy, especially if you did lose your phone. And mm -hmm. it, would, it also saves like the phone number that you're texting. So if you met somebody and you didn't get their name, but you got their number, this is really handy for you single people. Um, I don't know. Um, there's a couple of those. There's a couple. Yeah. But also, what's also cool about it is when you get a new phone, you can actually restore your history back right. to your phone, which, That's is, cool. which is really uh, handy for those people that need that. Um, Swift Key 3, I, I love that yeah. replacement. We've talked about this Agreed. multiple times. And um, I, I know they're doing the whole beta for the, the swipe kind of thing, but just the, the fact that it automatically can guess what I'm saying based off of my history of what I've said in Facebook and, and Twitter and things of that nature, it's very savvy, very handy, and um, um, I, I like the different color schemes that you can choose from. Who's call? Now, this is, uh, the, the, this is very handy if you tend to get a lot of telemarketers call you from the same number. And um, so you can save certain numbers. And so anytime that those particular calls come in, it automatically blocks those calls from, uh, from ringing and it will go to your voicemail right away. So I use a Google Voice vo voicemail. So it transfers them to, to Google Voice almost instantaneously. So I don't have to worry about it. But uh, then you can also create a list that is, um, you know, welcome calls or, you know, important calls. So, so, so you're really uh, sure that you're going to get the call from you know, that job that you're mm -hmm. waiting to get. And then last but not least, same thing as uh, Jason, uh, Evernote. I use Evernote on, on a daily basis with the guys at uh, Lazy Tech Guys and, and uh, some friends and family also use Evernote. We're sharing not just notes, obviously, but the pictures as well, too, and, um, you know, working on, like, design things and, you know, using it with, like, skits or stitch, whatever it's called, and very, very handy. I love it. Brad. Yeah, agreed. Um, yeah, Swift Key, man, that was like number six for me. I was like, I was like, the, the five that I chose had to be there, and the keyboard that the stock keyboard now yeah. is good enough that if I had to only pick five, okay, I'd use the stock. It's, I, I, I almost, um, these top fives are fun. I'm almost always curious what the next five are, like the six know, to ten right? list, you know? Because <laughs> so the app I cut off was WhatsApp, which is a messaging app yeah. I use. I mean, like all the all the social networks, whether it's Foursquare or Instagram and all that sort of stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Flashlight too. I agree. I mean, like I love my flashlights. Yeah. Yeah, my, yeah. my six to ten would be all yeah. uh, all the social networks. The um yeah true or or that that picture frame app I've been using to make the to take a couple pictures and put them into the one. Grid. Yeah yeah exactly yeah pick frame. So mm -hmm. I don't anyway. Mm -hmm. I cool. cut trip it, cut trip it, manage. Oh, trip it. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Anyway, I could run through five real fast. Do it. Um uh okay I don't even have a camera on me so it's just gonna be disembodied voice but. Foxfy, uh, uh, Wi-Fi tethering thing, really great. Yeah, I always that install an alarm clock app because I've had bad problems with the Android stock one. So uh, any any alarm clock app app, app will do. Uh, then I always install Grocery IQ, with, which is a grocery shopping list, and it can sync across my iPad on the web on the phone. And uh, it also it'll like send you. It's like, hey, there's a coupon. Just uh, just go ahead and get the the coupon. Oh, what am I at? Cool. Three. Um, the next thing that I would say is Spotify for music. Mm -hmm. All the time, I install mm -hmm. Spotify, and then finally Yelp to uh, get all of the foodly things that I want. Foodie. There awesome. you go. Cool. So if people are ever wondering, like, uh, you know, what what are some apps you recommend? Play the last 15 minutes. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's that's a bang for your buck right there. And and I would advise everyone to go look on your phone and look at your data usage over the past month and see what apps you're using the most data out of. That will tell you what your top you apps are. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, probably yeah. so. so.
Uh, well, well, without further ado, we've got a short amount of time to get through four more apps in the Android arena. So many enter, <laughs> but only one lives. Android Arena. Oh, the laugh gets me every time. It's fantastic. <laughs> so last week was episode 92. And uh, let's see here. We had business calendar, Zyme, and agenda calendar, three calendar apps. And oh, you got to wow. be kidding me. Oh, Look wow. at that. Look at oh. that. Wow. That was different than it was earlier, <laughs> yeah, too. It's been, yeah, it's been changed like crazy. When agenda the show started, business calendar was winning by like 10 votes. Okay. So. Boom. So uh, agenda calendar wins it. By one. one vote. Congratulations. <laughs> Although, if we look at percentage, then we're tied. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> Wait, if you look at percentage, we're tied. Win, uh, you, you win again, Gina. You're a force to be reckoned with. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm pretty I, sure I did not have that earlier. Uh, agenda was not winning. So. You know, these arenas are, are crazy like that. There are times where you open it up and then the show starts, and I think people either didn't vote or you know they, their memory is jogged and they jump in there and they vote. So it doesn't matter what it was earlier. Because it just it fluctuates all over the place. We so. need to lock it down before the show starts. I think that, that this has happened a couple of times. Yeah. And, it it, it yeah. does. Yeah, it's clearly, it's Zyme, like Zyme was so time. close to winning, and in that last, <laughs> thing, you know. But <laughs> I'm not upset because I'm winning my own arena. That's how I'm looking at it this year. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which is probably a good transition to my app. No, no, Chad, don't uh, don't pull up the Google Play there or anything like that because I want to show everybody my app from initial launch. Um, so you can just see exactly what I'm talking about. And Jason has no, Jason and Tony yeah, have no idea what this, this is. Very curious. Gina knows, and that's why she's snickering. My new, my theme for 2013 are just are just out there apps, and this one falls in that uh, category. I saw it; uh, re it was recently released. It's a little pricey. It's 4.99, and it's called QM Launcher. Um, I'm not a big launcher fan. I like to stick with the stock kind of, you know, just the the Google stock launcher because while some of the launchers are cool, I haven't all the configuration and the changes. And anytime you move from stock, I get a little worried. But I saw QM launcher and I just and I, I, I had to choose this one. So um, here I'm running. I'm on my phone. I'm just running the standard, um, you know, uh, Android launcher. I'm gonna go launch it from here, and uh, QM launcher is the most crazy, unique 3D launcher <laughs> I've ever seen in that it is a floating 3D cube that you put your apps on different pieces of the cube. Can you zoom in even closer, Chad? <laughs> look, at, look at that. Yes, I got him to laugh. Um, so if you I look here, you see, oh, you see there, you see there's my Evernote right there, and there's Facebook, and... And you could just spin that sucker around, and you can find the app you're looking for. And so I wanted to, let's see, I want to launch Wiki, Wikimedia, Wikipedia, and I just go and I find it and launch it, and then it goes. It's, I mean, I'm amazed at how quickly this allows you to launch into apps. Um, it's... <laughs> <laughs> I want to see that cube sort of spinning over the Zyme, like, Yeah, uh, the, the you know, calendar thing. Way. So now, I mean, before we make fun of it, it does have some interesting uh, things. It's got, the, <laughs> it's got the bottom tray, which is fine. You can get to the draw of all the rest of your apps, and you can scroll through there. It's real easy to, to drop an app on the cube. All you do is similarly you click and hold it, and then you, you find a place for it. Um, you can sort uh, the cube. So right now I've got it set to alphabetical order. So it's warning me that wherever I drop it, it's going to show up in alphabetical. You can control what cubes they get dropped on. Um, but what's interesting also is that it's got a little tray here, and that's where all the widgets go. Hmm. So as opposed to having widgets um, on the screen like we do with uh, with stock Android, it puts them up in the tray, which other launchers have done before. Um, crazy. How, how fast I, does it spin? Uh, you can control the speed. That oh, is in the settings. Okay. So I can go here and I can go to preferences and I can change. So there's a couple of different matrix. You can do the full 3D. You can do what they call a carousel mode, which is just kind of like a spinning mode, and or cascade mode, which is like a vertical mode. Um, you can control the sort. You can say alphabetical or most recent in terms of most recent you used. You can change the speed. So I'm going to move that all the way up. And you can change the movement. And um, and you can say whether you want to snap the matrix faces or not, and that's snapping the uh, the 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 sides of the um, the app icons. But here, so now this this is full speed, so you can see I've got it spinning, and it, and I can control the speed based on my draw, you know, based on how fast I move my right, finger. Right, right, yeah. 
So if you're really into Rubik's Cube... I, I was going to say, they yeah. really missed an opportunity to, yeah, to exactly. do a, a partnership with Rubik's. Yeah. yeah. So, they need um, a Rubik's skin. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, skins would be the, ne the next great thing. If you can change it, because it's got that bluish hue, and it's got, like, a red highlight type thing, um, it's just crazy, and I love it. Uh, this, so. this would totally be perfect for what we were talking about in pre-show, yeah. creating an Android phone... That is punishment for someone, <laughs> where yeah, all it is is uh, replacement apps yep. that are really, really difficult a, to imagine, use. Imagine a world where QM launcher is your is your launcher, uh, the circle <laughs> keyboard is your is your keyboard, and then you go into Zyme <laughs> to manage your calendar. That's a world I want to live in. I don't know about you. <laughs> So, oh, bad. Yep. That's a world where no one knows slice, how to use their smartphone. Slice, yeah, slice keyboard. keyboard there slice keyboard. Yeah, so there you go. So, uh, yeah, wow. so that's uh, QM Love Launcher, four ninety nine in the Google Play Store. Cool. Maybe it'll be a giveaway. We'll have an extra device. We'll load all this stuff on there. That would there, be so much and fun. And we'll give it away on the, on the it's show. It's a real so power that. user's phone. Yes. That's what it would be. It would, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Got to be really passionate yeah. about figuring things out. All right, Tony, you are up next. What do you have? So it's a game called Plague by Miniclip. And most games that you play, you're usually the protagonist. You're usually the good guy. But one thing that about Plague, it's a strategy game. And the idea is to kill the world. So I, my wife and I have been on this whole zombie thing. So we're really into The Walking Dead and everything. This is kind of similar to that where you control the plague that is attacking the world. And um, you do it with, um, with you have a world map. So if you want to come to my screen here. Um, Where are we? Okay. There we go. Okay. Um, okay, so it's going to take... Okay, so you have a world map that um, that you decide where you want your disease to start. So let's just say you want to start it in North America. And the longer that the, the disease incubates, the more infected that you get and the more DNA or more points you earn. And essentially uh, what happens is uh, you have these little red dots that come on the screen and you tap them to earn those particular points. So you have to kind of um, be, be um, diligent about seeing whenever those little red dots pop up on the screen. So it, it should happen in just in a little bit. But I don't know if you guys can see, but you also see a, uh, oh, you also see these little dots here. There's also DNA points. And you also see little boats going from place to place. You, you also see flight plans. Planes, yeah. And you can actually spread that disease from one continent to another. And so this is just the start. What happens is as your disease incubates, your disease can get worse and it can get more deadly. And uh, you can uh, be specific as to how it gets infected. So you can, you can infect people through livestock. You can have different symptoms like it starts off with coughing, then it starts off into uh, nausea and to other things that I don't even want to mention. Um, and then some abilities like if um, if the person is taking cold medicine uh, with higher point value, you can actually counteract that cold medicine and still kill them. And the idea <laughs> I don't like this game to win to win the game, you have to kill everybody, like literally everybody. <laughs> this is like Twelve Monkeys, the game. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so at the bottom here, um, with your DNA, you have infectivity, Never severity. Um, Sorry, it's out. There you go, severity and. Uh, uh, lethality and um, lethality. I currently play it on casual because it can get really uh, insane because you have all these things popping up uh, around the world uh, that you have to kind of uh, manage and then you want to uh, make sure that you don't waste your points on just being lethal you also want to make sure that it can be spread through simple things like touching and coughing and um, then you get these little global news updates saying, oh, um, they've closed the airports in Sweden. So, so you have to think, oh, maybe I should uh, use a different strategy to, uh, to, get the, uh, to, get, to get the disease in Sweden. So I'll do it by boat instead of plane. So it's, uh, if you're into those kind of strategy games, this is really uh, a lot of fun. It is free. And um, it, it's a freemium kind of uh, method. So if you want to pay more, you have more diseases. This is a bacterial disease. You also have viruses and other things that are more airborne. Um, and then you also have, if you pay more, you also have um, <coughs> other methods to uh, to infect other people. So um, it's really great on a tablet. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I brought my tablet, but it, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, I, it looks like there's a lot of fine detail there's in there. There's a lot, that yeah. Blowing it up a little bit. 
I've been playing it actually for a while, and uh, I've gotten to the, like the, you you can get into like parasite phase yeah. and stuff like that. Um, and a tip that I have is is keep your symptoms low, and then they'll never figure out that there's even a disease. Oh, that that's, just, a, good, that's, that's a good point. That's, that's nefarious. That's actually, <laughs> that's actually a great point, Chad. Thank you. Um, and on the on the bottom right hand corner, it says the world. This is the world trying to come up with a cure for your disease. So um, right now, there's you know the disease isn't lethal whatsoever. But the more people that you kill, the more um, the more uh, scientists and doctors will get involved to try and come up with a cure. So your job is to beat those doctors. So yeah, you, you want to keep those symptoms low, so it kind of goes under the radar, and uh, it's it's a lot of fun trying to beat your last score to see if you can kill everybody in you know three months <laughs> versus ten months, something like that. Man, that game just sounds. Little it's, 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 really, it's really fun. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> it's really fun. And then you, you know, like you'll play like uh, we started playing in a Skype call, and it was like, oh man, Argentina is like almost <laughs> dead, but come on, like they're they're the ones that's like starting the cure. Yeah, I just need to kill the world. Wow, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. It's dangerous. <laughs> there really is a it's game a for everything game. out yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. It's, a so anyway. no, it's, a, it's a science experiment. I right? suggest sure. it's yeah, simulation. It's hypothetical. Yeah, it's not real. <laughs> Plague Incorporated really or Plague Inc. Inc. Yeah. There we go. Um, well, I also have a game, a little less diabolical, <laughs> uh, and it's a dollar, I believe, what is it? A dollar, no, it's 99 cents right now. It's 66% off because they just launched it. It's called Super Hexagon, and uh, it's, I believe, a port of a PC game. I never knew about it or played it on the PC, but in the chat, I have audio on here, and you want to take it because the audio when you play is just, it's its a great soundtrack. But it's a pretty uh, straightforward game. So I'll show you here. I'll just launch right into it and get it all positioned. So I'll tap to start. So you see that little arrow down there? I have to avoid the lines by tapping either left or right. Ah, and it's hard to do at an angle, as it usually is. But it's looking a little weird, too. Like, the display is kind of funky. I don't know why it's like that. It wasn't like that earlier when I was playing. But uh, anyways, it'll probably look better on your device. I don't know why it's, it's formatted strangely here. But really, it's just an easy way to kill time. It's definitely in the in the realm of time killer style game. You just basically, the, the hexagon surrounds you and closes in on you. And you try and move your arrow so that it doesn't get caught in the wall of the hexagon. And the soundtrack adds to the chaotic nature of it. I'm really bad doing this while I'm talking, by You're, the way. Ig ignore the device, <laughs> but watch the game. <laughs> there we go. Oh, you have it. Excellent. I'm so nice. happy. All and right, so there you go. The, zoom in. Ignore the device. Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> it was, it's like totally zooming on my on my phone. I don't know why it's doing that. Unfortunately, I don't have audio because the the, the soundtrack is definitely one of the... It's, uh, it it's part fun. of the key, right. key elements to it because if you have headphones on and you're playing this, the walls kind of start closing in on you a little bit faster and it gets a lot more frantic. Like I think as far the farthest I could get into it was right around... I don't know, 11 seconds, not very far. It's really hard. Um, but it's a great time waster. It totally falls into that category of, oh, I'm sitting in the doctor's waiting for my appointment. I'll just pull this out and kill five minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called Super Hexagon. Pretty straightforward game. There's not a whole lot to show you. Uh, but it's a lot of fun. It has a little bit of that kind of retro feel to it how, how uh, that I it? like. It looks fun. I don't I don't think there is a beating. I think uh, you just go playing. as long as you, you can and you try and b break your own record. Okay. Um, it would be cool if it if it synced that record so you could see how far people get because it's right. very hard. Uh, and I'd love to see how far people can actually get. I'm so happy you had that on your tablet. <laughs> yes. Because trying to play it is it, hard. It yeah. is very to play difficult. It with, with the display all weird like that, I don't know the why angle, it was like that. Doing stuff on the angle is weird too. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, but it wasn't, yeah, it but wasn't, wasn't full right. screening yeah. Yeah. properly. I don't know yeah. why it was doing that. But, anyways, it's super, super hexagon. It's super worth 99 super cents. Worth Sorry. What's that, is Gina? There a, is there a seizure warning before you start playing? <laughs> <laughs> That's warning. a good question. Um, I would imagine it probably is deserving of that just based on how it looks. Yeah, see, that I, I soundtrack is kicking. And, and you know, it's funny because I think they dumbed it down a bit because it used to be this fast, like, in the beginning of the game. And I think, the, oh, that's the other thing is as you're going, it'll move from hexagon to pentagon to... Um, to other things, so it'll it'll pause and it'll go pentagon, and then you're gonna be in a pentagon, and it'll be like pause, and it'll be like 
Hexagon. And who, then, who yeah. Who can play that? Who can do that? That's I don't know. Crazy. That's awesome. Anyways, it's very, That's very fun. difficult, uh, but a lot of fun. So check it out. Like the music. Yeah, the music's cool. Kicking. It's good driving music. Definitely. I'll right. leave it on all the time. All right, let's move on. Gina, what? Oh, thank you for that last little blast. Gina, what is your app of the week? Wow, it's really, really boring compared to all the apps that you guys chose. <laughs> Uh, my choice this week is this simple dialer widget. Uh, it's free, and it's just what it sounds like. So I, I, now that I'm back on Android full-time, I'm sort of reveling in widgets. I'm really just happy that I hit my home screen widgets. And uh, this one's pretty, pretty, just like the name says, pretty simple, straightforward. It's a dialer widget. It's got three uh, tabs. The first one is the dialer. I'll be honest, I think that's kind of useless. I almost never use my actual dialer, right? I I'm always going through contacts. But the other two tabs are the most useful. One is your call log. Uh, so this is just always up on your home screen. It's your call log, your most recent calls, of, you know, the person, the contact, their phone number. And then the third tab is your, your favorite contact. And that's really who, what I use the most. I mean, I don't, I don't really use my phone as a phone to make voice calls very often. It's more of a texting machine, I think. But there's really only like two or three people who I text or call a lot. Uh, so I like that that those favorite contacts, you know, getting getting access to those favorite contacts really simply from this widget, and um, and also I generally call back people who have called me recently. So the call log and the favorite favorite contacts. This widget is uh, it's transparent. It looks really nice. It's resizable. It's scrollable. So it looks really good in the latest versions of Android. Um, and uh, you can you can add it to the lock screen. It's very customizable. You can change colors and and uh, and fonts and things. I haven't done it because the default the default look and feel is actually like quite nice looking and it's just just an easy way to you know dash off a quick text message or make a quick phone call to someone who called you or one of your favorite contacts uh so it's simpler dialer widget completely free just a widget add to your home 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 screen or your lock screen awesome and i like the transparency of it because yeah. it just mm -hmm. just kind yeah, of it's, flows it's, in with your background and everything it's, it's boring compared to the cube and the and the crazy games but now imagine a cube dialer <laughs> Ooh. Right, dare every to, number that you want to dial is on the cube. On a dare to side. dream. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Imagine, yeah. and it will become reality. Yep, exactly. We're on to something. Yeah, a cube dialer with this soundtrack that kills the entire world. Make it happen. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Uh, let's vote on this poll, or rather, you should vote. Uh, which is your favorite app? QM, QM Launcher, Plague Incorporated, Super Hexagon or Simple Dialer Widget. You can vote at AAAPoll.com slash 93. That's AAAPoll.com slash 93. Go there now and share with us your favorite app this week. We were all over the place, and I love it when it happens like that. And uh, we'll see where everything kind of lands here. Real time, though. I'm telling you, but. I think QM Launcher is going to find an audience, I really think. I think I'm on to something here. Well, it's found a couple of them. All my arena picks have been way too square buttoned up so far. I got to find something crazy. Go crazy, Gina. Yeah, just like I said, dare to dream, you know? <laughs> Shoot for the stars. Yeah. Uh, I, I think I need to start like a Tumblr or something of like the, the I can't say it on air, but there's crazy apps that I find. Um, you know, like that are just that are just crazy. I love that. I love that it. would be a good tumbler. Yeah, actually, really should. Yeah, wouldn't yeah. be hard. I don't yeah, think it, yeah. it would be great to have everything in one cohesive place. Yeah, that's for sure. So that that uh, diabolical person that wants to create that uh, yeah. that one device that has everything has an easy way. We got to do that at that. some point. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, right after I set up Tasker, we'll do that. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> next week I'm out. I'm not going to be here. Um, however, Kevin Purdy will be joining the two yes. of you, I believe. Yep. I yes, see the he email is. here. He's in. Awesome. He's in. Yep. Sweet. Kevin's been on the show uh, a number of times. He's always awesome. Um, he's author of the Complete Android Guide, I believe. Yeah, the Complete Android Guide. He's my co-host on Embedo, which is my other show that I do. Kevin's good people. We did. We worked at Lifehacker together, so it'll be a great show. He is good people. It's going to be even more fun putting the show together without you. <laughs> hey, well, <laughs> Gina, you and I are going to be talking a lot on next week. <laughs> yes, we are. I'll, I'll, I'll help out. I'll, I'll put well, stuff in there leading up. Out. It's you know? okay. But yeah, day of, probably not so much. Yeah, exactly. Um, but that is it for this week. Tony, thank you so much for yeah, joining us. Thanks for letting me come by again. Yeah, Appreciate it. it's awesome having you here and uh, having your your uh, input on kind of like some of these apps and everything. Really appreciate yeah, you sharing that, all that stuff with us. Uh, tell us what you have going on at Lazy Tech Guys. What you got going on? Uh, we're going to be at uh, Apps World, uh, Droid World in about two weeks. So if you're really into development and apps, as we were today, 
uh, and you want to see it from the ground up with startups, Droid World is uh, really cool. It's going to be in San Francisco. Uh, you can follow us at LazyTechGuys.com, um, our Twitter, at LazyTechGuys, Google+, Plus, Pinterest feed, uh, obviously Facebook, or you can follow me directly at LTG Tony. Uh, go Niners. And, yeah, uh, go Niners. Thank you again for yeah. uh, letting me come by. Appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Awesome. It was awesome having well, you. It's good to have you, man. And yeah. Ron. Yeah, so uh, you can go to about.me slash RonXO, which is nice because now I realize I need to update it because uh, I now work for yeah. I now work for Image Comics, the uh, publisher behind The Walking Dead and other great comics like Saga and Invincible and uh, amazing stuff. Uh, so go to imagecomics.com, check it out there. I literally just started, so I haven't really made an imprint there. Uh, but still go to iFanboy because I love that site. And uh, and because now I work for a comic publisher, I can't really be reporting on comics anymore. So I had to mm -hmm. move from the media over to the other side of the fence. Just similar like how Eileen couldn't, Absolutely. working for Google, couldn't do the show anymore. So that's mm -hmm. kind of, you know, the hard, deci the hard decisions we have to make in this industry. So, so. in this situation, the show you had to let go of was the other show. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah good point. Yeah. So yeah. now you know the show I really love. No, no, I love, I love, I, 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 and I, actually, if you are a comic book fan, my last iFanboy podcast will be Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern time. We're going to be streaming it live on iFanboy.com uh, through Google Hangouts. So we're going to cool. do one of those broadcast YouTube awesome. on air things. So you've been um, doing that show a long time. So seven years, yeah. 370 episodes. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Every week, it's weird. Yeah, yeah. It's weird to not have to edit a show again. It's going to be bizarre. <laughs> but yeah, but onward to in new and different things. That's and, right. Yeah, good stuff. So. Yeah, awesome. congratulations. It's awesome, awesome. Ron. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Exciting. Congratulations. Uh, Gina, go ahead and plug what you got going on. Yeah, I just want to plug this week in Google, which I do here on the Twit Network. It's on Wednesdays at 1 p.m. Pacific. And the other show I do with Kevin Purdy is called In Beta. It's about open source software, mobile apps, and software development, and uh, basically anything Kevin and I think is interesting. That 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 airs uh, the 5x5 network, so it's 5x5.tv slash In Beta. That's it. Awesome. And Chad, real quick, what you got? I uh, help out at the Twin Studio a lot, and I do a show about Minecraft uh, called OMG Craft. Check it out, omgcraft.com. My favorite Minecraft show. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> Ron. What Chad doesn't realize is that I watch every episode. Yeah, I don't know what right. the heck you're talking about, but I do watch. So <laughs> You can at least speak the lingo now. Exactly. So. exactly. Uh, <laughs> cool. You can find me at about.me slash Jason Howell or on Twitter. I am at Jason Howell there. That is it for this week. Another uh, another episode of All About Android. And dare I say, it was uh, it was a lot of fun. It had a lot of really good stuff in it. Uh, leave us a voicemail. 347-SHOW-AAA. We'd love to hear your voice. Uh, you can send us an email or a video mail, which is a link to a video to our email at aaa at twit.tv. You can find the show on Twitter. We are at Android Show. Show notes can always be found at twit.tv slash aaa. You can also find all of our past episodes there, including uh, you know places like YouTube, iTunes, all over the place. Finally, you can catch us live every Tuesday at 5 p.m. Pacific at live.twit.tv. That's it for this week. We'll see you next week on another episode of All About Android. Don't drop it! <laughs>